Mono Green has been getting a ton of heat lately in Standard, everyone talking about how bad it is. So today, in this video, I hope to prove them all wrong. That's right guys, I am here to try to change your mind about Mono Green because I know mine has been changed very recently because I know I've been talking bad on Mono Green. I've been saying how if we see a green land come down on the opponent's side, we're feeling pretty good. But right now, we're trying to change the narrative. We are a artifact package, and this is a very aggressive build we're trying to make here. And it works off of the Teething Worm, but obviously on one, it grows when artifacts hit the field, we get 1-1 one, one counters. We want to try to follow that up possibly with an Ozolith here. Perfect curve out, obviously. This is going to allow us to get extra counters every time we're getting counters on our things. And then Sentinel is going to produce map tokens every time it enters and attacks, which is a perfect 1-2-3 synergy. We've seen this. Not a surprise. Now, here's some other synergies we have here today. Clay Champion and Root uh, Wire Amalgam. Both of these being artifact creatures, triggering both our Wormlet and our Archivist, because we do run that as well. It grows with uh, artifacts uh, hitting the field as well. The Clay Champion, guys, this thing comes in massive. It already comes in as an 8-8 if you just cast it with green mana for four. A four mana 8-8 is good enough, but then you get extra counters off the Ozolith and we run the Innkeeper's Talent. And if both of these are on the field, this thing comes in at like 16, 16 and plus. It's crazy. It's very powerful and uh, it's hard to deal with. For four mana, a 16, 16 ain't bad. And the Amalgam is pretty cool because if the more counters you get onto this thing, if the opponent wants to, you know, spot remove it late in the game, you can just sacrifice it to create another body, which is pretty cool. Or you can uh, triple the amount of power that the creature is going to be. Uh, thanks to its ability to sack and create this golem and it has haste, which is pretty cool Now arch druid's charm pretty important here because of the temporary lockdowns have been tough So, you know blowing that, those up is important and then uh, we do run some fable passages because we have a bill in the deck as well And mirex because mirex is uh, artifact tokens that you're generating which can trigger the wormlet and the archivist once you've run out of gas So pretty cool deck guys and again, we've been winning with this thing a lot I mean two videos worth so I hope you guys enjoy this one. Uh, we'll see you at the end. Peace out all right, guys, today we're going to showcase a green deck for you that hopefully will play really well. Now, this is the second time I'm recording this video because we had some audio issues. But the first time around, we had a solid run, and I'm hoping to keep that going because uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, green is one of those decks that I have been talking a little bit bad about. I'm not going to lie uh, recently, but um, hopefully today I can override what I've been saying and showcase a green deck that is, you know, aggro enough to get the job done. Up against this card right away, which is why I went with the Archivist there on turn two, as opposed to the Talent, because the Talent will hopefully draw us into some cards with the Archivist being on the field. All right, looks like they're going to take out the Teething Wormlet, and that's okay with me, I suppose. Land is good. I actually think I'm going to uh, play the Sentinel because I didn't expect to hit a land drop there, but we did. And I want to make sure we keep the pressure very, very high here. Try to shut this down quickly. All right, we like an Inspector. There's not a whole lot going on with that. Nice. All right, so we've got the talent. We've got the ability here to give a ward to things with counters and we find another land not ideal i will say that was not ideal the archivist is going to grow because of the token that we create off of the sentinel so we got some power there too all right not enough ward gets through the uh opponent here with these uh saw blades they still had the one mana to pay and they've also got another two mana spell artifact that they can drop that could uh, force me to sacrifice a creature. Now, if that happens, I probably will drop the Archivist. Just waiting on the opponent's decision here. I would imagine a removal spell's got to be imminent here, but I don't know. Looks like the opponent's struggling to figure out an answer here, which we like. We like a lot, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if we can take out Orzhov discard right away, that's a pretty big win for us. Let's go, dude. We got him. We got him. Now, that's a great way to start things off. That's a very tough opponent there and a good win. All right, I get to go first with actually a really good curve here. Not a lot of counters being applied early on here, but um, still a pretty good curve. Got some pressure early with the Ginger Brute. 
Opponent took a couple of mulligans there, it looks like. Pretty cool sleeves that they have here. All right, we're getting in with the Ginger Brute really quickly. Now, a couple of mulligans means they probably need a very specific hand. It might be more of a combo style build where they need certain pieces in the hand for it to work. We'll see. Oh, that's actually a really good two drop find there. Let's go. Got the innkeeper's talent ready to roll here. <clears throat> Now, because of the nature of the matchup here, I actually think I'm going to prioritize giving my things ward. Yeah, I figured that would be the case. Um, I could just sacrifice it for the two and gain three life. But I also could just play something here, too. I think I'm going to play the, the amalgam here. Get the amalgam down. Give it the counter, which does give it the ward. Not to mention we can, uh, you know, get a haste creature here off of that if it doesn't die to the fall. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, yeah, we'll go with the sentinel here. They've definitely got to run out of juice here pretty soon. I, the, the, the toxic decks, these Demir toxic decks, they do run a lot of removal, but not, it's not like the basis of their entire deck. They run counter spells, they run draw spells. So essentially they should run out, hopefully pretty soon here. A land, let's go. I am actually going to just max this out. Because what's going to happen here is if we get down a clay champion with a maxed out talent, it comes in with 20 counters on it, which is ridiculous. <laughs> or close to 20, I should say. We do need to get the Ozolith down. All right, that seems like a bit of a waste. I definitely will take it. Just trying to get the proliferation off. I respect it. We're too powerful for this deck. I don't think Demir Toxic can keep up, unfortunately. We just have too much power too early. Too many uh, mulligans that they took too, so. Too many mulligans. Pay zero for the clay champion and we've got ourselves a massive creature. It is 2020, right? Oh, it's 1414. It's 2020 if we have the Ozolith down. Uh, it doesn't matter, submit zero. Submit one, whatever. All right, so that's going to get counters. Everything's got that ward, which is huge. The snare. Not bad. Got to say, not bad. But you got a 14-14 staring you down the barrel here. What's the move? They got draw two. <clears throat> Skull Dweller. I mean, that is a really good answer. Respectfully, a very good answer. Oh, nice. GG's. Yeah, honestly, we were going to play the Ozolith there, which would get the um, the Wormlet. What was it? Like one, two, three, four. We were probably going to get four counters on that there and then uh, bring in a Sentinel too, which would have been nice. GG. All right, we had a nice little rank up there, which means we get a throwaway game here if we want. If we take an L here, that's okay. We don't go backwards. And we've got a decent looking hand here. Got the Archivist into a talent and then hopefully giving ward. That would have been nice to have a turn ago. Shoulda, coulda, woulda though, right? Okay, rack those colors. I think we're safe to play this, but I don't know if Archivist is going to survive. It sure seems like it's going to. All right, we're in for some damage. The Mice Sleeves and Avatar tells me this is, this should be uh, like a fling sort of deck. Like an aggro fling deck, but I don't know. Honestly, I'm going to just pump this up. I mean, we're under no certain duress here, so might as well get this fully ready to go. This card draw two. Oh, I know what they're trying to do. Okay, so this opponent more than likely is trying to get the, uh, what is it? The push and pull for a one, one shot win here. All right, well, we're about to go absolutely bananas. Absolutely bananas. Here we go. They're, they're a few lands away from push or pull. Uh, they've got the push for two, obviously, but the pull is like six drop, I think, or seven. 
Yo, that's kind of trippy. I could have sworn my dog was under my feet. He's not even in the room. Liliana with the minus, huh? Okay. A fight? And you think you can win? Fine by me. Fine by me. We're gonna definitely go with the ginger brute here, I think. I know I could go with the amalgam for five, but I don't think there's a whole lot of value there. Because the ginger brute can attack the Liliana for the one, and I can put all the extra counters on the wormlet here. And I think there's just more value to be had, to be honest. Eleven, twelve? No, let's just take out Liliana. And then the charm can take out an enchantment, an artifact, or I could look for a specific creature card, which would be kind of a good thing to do. Which creature would I try to pull here? Maybe another ginger brute, and then we could just win the game if they sweep the board here. All right, so they do go with the push. Uh, let's see. They pay the double ward. All right, yeah, let's go look for something here. What do we want? I guess this gives more counters, right? Yeah, I'm actually going to take this. Oh, we do need to hit a land, though. That was kind of silly. Oh, we hit a land. Okay, we get rewarded. We get rewarded for my nonsense. I, I, I was thinking Bristly Bill because it was the only creature that could pump another creature. Um, and so I was going to take it, try to pump the Ginger Brute more. But I was like, wait a minute, we don't have a land. But we did hit one there, so GG's. All right, this hand looks really good. We got the bill with the extra uh, land triggers on the Fable Passage. And we got our one drop. So let's get the ball rolling here, guys. It looks like Gruel, which could be big things, or it could be more like a mice type game plan. Nope, it's going to be big stuff. Could be dinosaurs. Been seeing dinosaurs more frequently. Definitely going to go Archivist here, though. A little bit of a setup move. We haven't really found the Ozolith yet. Um, the Ozolith has been really like a key role player to this, uh, you know, our game plan and stuff. All right, let's get down the Bristly Bill. All right. I don't love the Rhino. The Rhino's a bit of a scary card. I think we're off to a bit of a a bit of a slow start comparatively to what the opponent could possibly pull off here. They're going to get some really big things down here. This is that uh, Calamity build that wants to get to six mana and just surprise us. They're electing to just ramp here. They could still technically play the Rhino, but they don't. Wow. Okay. Not playing the Rhino. What sort of creature could I pull here that would advance us forward? I guess uh, getting a... Uh, you know what, yeah. If we if we end up grabbing No, they used the wrong land there, dude. Okay, so we can't use this at instant speed anymore. We gotta use it now. I was really hoping they'd tap the Mirax. I don't know why I thought they would. But I do wanna go grab the Sentinel. Sorry, that's what I was trying to say. I want the Sentinel because it's extra artifacts passively that are gonna grow the field. Is it calamity time? Sure feels that way, right? Sure feels that way. Not a calamity, but 12 damage. Oh gosh. Yeah, I think we're cooked here, guys. Nothing has haste though. Maybe they're just going face with the damage. Oh, 24 though. I didn't realize they were gonna get double counters before the trigger goes off with the terror. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, the opponent going first on this one. Hand looks decent. Believe it or not, hand looks kind of decent. I think we can go Teething Wormlet into Ginger Brute while we play the Fable Passage and then set up the Sentinel. Okay, I guess we don't even have to do that now. Uh, definitely still going with the Wormlet here. I think we're going to pass on the Ginger Brute for now, though. Uh, let's see. So the opponent running Soul Tide Colors. Probably going to be doing some self-mill stuff. Archivist down. 
I'm telling you though, guys, we haven't even hit one Ozolith yet. If we hit the Ozolith with the um, the talent, it goes crazy. All right, sure. I can't pass up the Sentinel, man. It's just too good here. I really wish I had the Archivist on the field, but you know, what can you do? There goes the Sentinel. I had a feeling it was going to, you know, not make it through, but what can you do? All right, that's good. I mean, they did have no land drops there and they did have to uh, dr drop a card. Okay, okay, okay. We got this. We got this. Everybody stay calm. Stay calm. All right, we got the Ginger Brute down. We actually might get a little bit of Mirex love here on this game. Mirex could pull off some really good stuff for us, man. We have eight damage right now. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one in your hand, put the rest in your graveyard. That's good. Oh, gee, geez, man. Right? This is going to be too good, right? This feels too good. This feels too good. All right, we got a lot of damage happening here and some death touch now. And the opponent down to three. Down to three. Let's see what they got. I can't imagine us getting hit with a sweeper, but you never know. These soul tie builds, yeah, I was going to say, I didn't think so. But these soul tie builds could do really anything. They've got devious cover up as an option in black, but I didn't expect to see that because I haven't seen that yet from these opponents, but good stuff. All right, man, moving on up right now. Feeling good. Teething Wormlet looks good in the opening hand almost always. Got the Sentinel. It's a good one-two punch. I would like an Ozolith on two. Can a guy get an Ozolith on two? No. That would be asking kind of a lot. I don't blame them. But now we're in range of spot removal on a Golgari player. Which means I think we avoid this for now and we try to get the innkeeper's talent going. Could be Terra Sunder though. I mean, we really could be walking into that as well. That's always an option. But I thought that would be the case. Which is why I went with the innkeeper's talent. Get that pumped up real quick. We're looking for some bodies here. I need to get a creature down so I can... Oh, of course it's Terra Sunder. Oh, man, this is not good. We're off to a pretty rough start here against this opponent. Find me something. Find me something good off the top. I'll take it. I'll take it. Sentinel is just a very powerful card on its own, honestly. Just a big body that continuously, you know, slams into the opponent, creating these, you know, tokens for us. The opponent, though, gets us with a simple minus two. Golgari really pulling through big time for the opponent here. Pulling through big time at the moment. Come on. Oh, take it. It actually does grow with the Sentinel. So assuming the Sentinel stays alive, though, we are up against Golgari mid. They probably got a ton of removal. We probably haven't even scratched the surface of it yet, to be honest. This is the one matchup that feels pretty bad, to be honest. Table Passage. Does that mean that they're like a Vraska Vine Lasher deck? Could be. If they are the Vraska build with the talent of their own, I do have my answer for the talent. Opponent does force a draw here. Come on, don't have it. Don't have it. Just plus. Still a little plus here. That works too. That works too. All right, we got a really good turn here because we've got the Archivist. We've got this for removal. And we've got a really clean little attack here on Liliana. All right, and any enchantments we can pull here, any talents, will draw us cards off the Archivist, which would be pretty sweet. I don't see that happening, though. I mean, you know, truly honest with myself. I've been saying that a lot. I'm trying not to say honest anymore, but uh, cruel. Call. Oh, there's no way they actually did. They did hit the talent. <laughs> 
That would be way too good if I pulled it, though, right? That's a good sign, though. I mean, that, that kind of screams desperation, right? This is definitely not a land, because I feel like they're having this awkward conversation with themselves on what to play, whether it be the talent or the uh, Moss with Dread Knight. And they make the call I probably would have made, too. All right, let's pump this up. All right. And let's keep on spreading the love. I don't think the opponent's gonna have a sweeper for us, so that feels good, and that's a fantastic top deck. We could honestly maybe run away with this just on the Mirex alone, but it comes down to this last card. If it's a devious cover-up, I, I was gonna say I would cry. All right, so they're just gonna create another body here to block with. Can we produce enough damage here with an attack? Not really. So let's get this down. Six, so they have to block to six. That's 10 getting through. No, that is enough damage. That is in fact enough damage. See you later, alligator. Let's go, dude. I thought this was gonna be for sure a loss, but you know what? We come through with the W. That feels good. Let's go, man. That seemed like a bad matchup for us, to be honest. Anyway, say it again, to be honest. Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't know what my deal is. I get these little crutch words and I just can't stop using them. All right, this opening hand seems, oh man, seems to maybe not cut it, to be honest. A couple of ginger brutes is nice, but I need some more. There we go. That's a, that's a good looking starter. I guess we throw this away, which Honestly, kind of tough to even do that. All right, let's see if we can't get a, a snowball effect going here. We finally got the Ozolith here on two, which feels good. Come on, Ozolith, let's do it. Now, if we can follow that up with the talent, that'd be even crazier. Liliana minus, sure. Something suspicious. <laughs> archivist is interesting um yeah i'll go archivist here why not why not orzov discard again i think we saw this one earlier in the video it's all starting to blend together though uh this is my second time recording this video so who knows man i've been playing this deck so long so many times in a row all right, the opponent goes for the discarding effect. Uh, the Archdruid's Charm is good removal. I, there's really nothing I'm gonna want to remove with it though. I feel like the only way to beat these kind of opponents here is to just flood the board with creature after creature after creature and eventually it'll be enough. All right, we're looking for like a Sentinel off the top. That'd be the best possible situation here. That's actually a pretty good card too. That's residual. Um, value. That's some residual value right there. And it, it pumps both of our creatures on field, so... I'll take it every day of the week, man. Just don't have another Liliana. Just wait one more turn on the Liliana. Alright, that's good. Yeah, that's fine. Nothing in the graveyard. Oh, they... thought it was a two-drop. Target element value of three. I thought it was two. Gosh darn it. That's fine. What now? We got the... We got the Mirex popping off for us here. The opponent does not have... Uh, you know, Field of Ruin type of effect here, so that's good. Oh, man. Alright, sure, sure, sure. That's tough, man. We definitely lose this one now. Opponent is cooking at the moment. I did not know they could bring that Liliana back. I thought it was three. Ooh, hold on. I don't know why the opponent just oops us. That's a little disrespectful, but why not? I mean, our mites right now are going to be pretty massive, my friend. So if you can keep up with it, good on you. But 
I'll just keep creating more and going crazy here. All right, looks like they're gonna return their kill spell. Such a such a cool concept. I, I'm not even gonna lie to you. That's just a cool concept. And then once it's done through its cycle, this can bring it back to you. That's so good. Another one? All right, well, I need a body. And I'm pretty sure we're cooked here because that's five damage over the top. Plus the two here. Yeah, that's going to be good games. I'm going to good game them even though I shouldn't because the opponent is uh, pretty sure they oops me. But you know what? It's all good. It's all good. All right, the opponent ran really good on that last one. Uh, this one looks decent. I think we can we, we can definitely work with this. Oh, it just got better. It just got a lot better. I like seeing white mana too. That's a good sign, except for potentially temporary lockdown. All right, it's going to be tokens. This one I had trouble with in the past. I'm going to be honest with you guys, because I, I think what made it tough is that they always had jump blockers, but we have a ginger brute, so... Maybe having Ginger Brute will be our saving grace because it can get through the tokens and maybe we can just grow it like crazy. Because we just don't have any trample, which makes it a little tough. I'd really like to get rid of that because that's going to be a problem. Not going to happen though. All right, definitely going to go with the Sentinel here. Keep on growing the board. Keep on gaining life. Going to 12 is a really tough thing for them to do, I would imagine. I need to start getting some counters on the Sentinel, though, next turn. If I can draw a land, that would be the most ideal play, because I can drop a bill, drop a land, give the Sentinel two counters, Innkeeper's Talent, give the Sentinel another two counters, and then give the Teething Wormlet another two counters, which is absolutely absurd, which is why it's so good to have an Ozolith down early. Uh, but the opponent wanted to see no more of that, and I don't blame him. All right, I get to go first. Opener seems a little fishy, but I'm going to keep it only because I go first. I would like to go with the uh, Ginger Brute here on one, but I, I would prioritize the Ozolith any day, I think, over the Ginger Brute. Of course, we hit a land. That was that was bound to happen, so not super surprising. Feels like they have something to interact here. Ah, I see, I see. What do they take here? I'm very curious. Gotta be the Sentinel, right? Which is, uh, it's a little heartbreaking, I'll be honest. And it's Demir, so you know they're gonna have a ton of removal too, which is annoying. Oh wait, what'd they take? An Ozolith? Oh, shoot. Thank you. Why the heck not? Let's go. I haven't got the root wire play down yet. I'd like to. Alright. Well, we've got a situation here where we got a lot of colorless mana and a champion. Um, feels like Ginger Brute should be the play. Hit a land. All right. I guess it's green, though. We needed it to be green, right? All right, Ginger Brute gonna just start going in on the opponent here. Yeah, I figured as much. I have a feeling they're gonna have a lot of that. I know I could go five here, but... I think I like this a little bit better. it has oh flood maw okay you know what that was kind of silly huh i guess going five would have been the better play on second thought that's a good find hmm well this is tricky because i'd like to use this for green to activate the champion's ability here but i also want to get down the talent so i think i'm gonna choose the talent I think we choose talent every day of the week because it's going to give us the counter to get bigger than this because it's a four or five, but also it has the um, the ward, right? And they're only at three mana, so 
Could be a Liliana though. Could we get caught by Liliana here. Okay, just some milling. I mean, sure. Got a long way to go to mill us out, so why not? I'm gonna go crazy with this clay champion. Absolutely bananas. We're getting in. We're getting in and we're playing defense still. I think they're gonna have a really hard time with us guys because I'm pretty sure go for the throat is like their main removal spell too, by the way. Doesn't hit artifacts. Does not hit artifacts. Sure. Not gonna be able to outscale me though. This is colorless mana, right? No, I need one green. Um, I still think this is the move. Got the 16, 16, and we'll submit zero. Go absolutely ham bone here. Absolutely ham bone here. If they want to double block, sure. Why not? Um, yeah, we'll do that. Feeling good, man. Feeling really good right now. Uh, if I can get this down and then double counters, that'd be kind of crazy. That would be pretty ridiculous, to be honest. I could always sacrifice the root wire. Uh, I could leave mana open and sacrifice the root wire if I wanted to. Opponent has to block both creatures, right? Yeah, I think this is a foregone conclusion. I just, I don't know. I don't know what they're holding on to here. Could be removal. If it's like a Shieldred's Edict, that could be tragic. That would be the best possible spell for them, or like a Liliana. They take damage. For the sake of Firexia, I will keep watching. What's the move here on this? Are they just gonna minus two? Gotta be a minus two, right? Yeah, gotta be minus two. Alright, they did hit an Arch Druids, um, two of them, that would have been nice to have. Let's cycle this. Teething Wormlet. Teething Wormlet. Alright, well, we know they're gonna double block, right? Four, five. I need five to activate this ability. I'm trying to think what I want to do here, guys. I think I need to keep going wide, right? What if we get hit though by an opponent? Yeah, let's just let's just not go let's not go too wide here. The opponent could easily hit us with a uh, devious, you know, cover up, sweep the board, and then we're cooked. So I want to give myself the option here to create a Murex token on the back end, and then also have another creature in hand to kind of reset. A Murex could get to six power easily with the field we currently have, with the Ozolith and the fully. Kitted out talent. Pickpocket, sure. Looks like their game plan here is to still try to put bodies in front of us. They gift me a card, steal my bill. Steal my bill. All right, that'll do it. We've got all the wards, so there's no plussing on the Jace gonna happen here, so. That will do it, and uh, Teething Wormlet's gonna get even bigger after we create this Murex token. You can be made to obey. All right, and GG's, let's go! Ooh, baby, another discard, and or not discard, this one was actually Mill, a Mill control deck. That's not bad, not a bad win at all. All right, so no matter what happens at this point, I'm pretty happy with the outcome of this video. I mean, to go do this two times in a row and still get, you know, very good results with mono green is extremely exciting at this point in standard because, you know, this wasn't happening a little while back. Green was just not working out, but I think we figured out something pretty good here, man. Got the Ozolith again with the innkeeper's talent, not bad. I don't know if I want to drop the Archivist first, though. Get that roll on, man. Because we're going to be a little behind here on this opponent. <clears throat> it feels like this is the type of opponent, too, to run a temporary lockdown in, like, Sweepers galore. Because I think this is going to be the Boros Tokens deck. Which might be pretty bad for us if we don't find an Archdruids. 
Man, we have so many options here, to be honest. Um, I think I'm going to go with the talent first. And then we'll go Ozolith next turn, or... Hmm. I don't know. I could have gone literally any one of these cards, and you can make an argument for it, but... I'm sticking to my guns here. I think the talent's the way to go. Sure. Gaining life. Uh-oh, is this Orzov? No, it still feels like Oros tokens, but maybe it's mono white tokens too. Who knows? Who knows? I think it's Bill actually. Let's go. Let's go, Bill. Do your thing, Bill. Another clay champion with a bunch of Murexes on the field, which is so wild. I haven't had that issue yet. All right, drawing a card. Caretaker's talent has got to be the most busted card, man. It is so ridiculous. I love the card so much, though. I can't hate on it. It's one of my favorites right now. It finds its way in a lot of my builds. I wouldn't mind finding a land here and then just getting the talent all the way to level three. Not a land. Still not bad though. Not bad. Are we gonna get hit with a sunfall? Probably. <laughs> but you know, what can you do? What can you do? You gotta try to play through it, you know? Either they have it or they don't. This deals four damage for two mana and they can deal with the ward one. So I don't think attacking in this turn is going to be very smart. Unless actually I give the bill the one one counter off of this. Yeah, that will be good. But then they can hit it and then double block. That'd be tragic. That would be tragic. It's worth a shot though. Oh, why did I swing with the ginger brute? It has haste. I didn't mean to do an attack all. I just thought that was going to prioritize the bill and not... Gosh darn it. I just threw away a Ginger Brute for no reason. That is so wild. I went this whole video too, I feel like, without making too many mistakes. That's so tragic, dude. Yeah, they definitely have the... Deal. Oh, this one's a straight up kill spell, huh? That's That's tough. That's a tough one to deal with. At least the opponent's dealing in spot removal instead of like, you know, sweepers. <laughs> it's not looking like they run temporary lockdown because it would just be too much value uh, for me for them to use that at this point, right? All right, let's get this down. We are not drawing very well. The draws have been lackluster, including the mana. All right, we are still gonna keep pressing the uh, issue here with the attacks. Get lost, nice. Nice. All right, well, it's map tokens at least. Map tokens are good for my build. Free counters, you know? All right, they go level two, creating another rabbit. Right on. This this one this one hurts a little bit because it's like it's so winnable. It's so winnable if a few things go right for us, you know. All right, and I think I'm just gonna cycle this. Another Murex is crazy. Why give me a clay champion if you're gonna troll me like this, you know? Surely we find three of fours before we find three Mirexes in real life, right? I'd say in most cases. All right, looks like they're just going to swing with everything here, which tells me they probably have a sweeper, right? Yeah, it's probably going to be a swing all sunfall the board. Oh, okay. No sunfall. Um, gosh, it feels like we kind of have to just jam this, to be honest. 
It's not like terrible though. Obviously we're getting a ton of value out of it. It's a big body, but it just feels like we could have got more, you know? All right, and then next turn, there's a strong possibility we could just one-shot them if... Um, you know, yeah, let's just do that. No way, dude. They have another one of these exiling effects. Oh my gosh, can the opponent get any luckier with the removal they've been finding? Oh man. It's like they have the right removal at the right time, because this was perfect early on. It got better. Gosh. Well, that's probably going to do it. We're probably cooked here. Come on, opponent. Pay the one ward if you want to pay the toll. Do it. Not on my watch. You know what, buddy? Screw your watch. Uh, I cannot reiterate how winnable this game felt, man. It really did. Not anymore. Not anymore. Oh, wow. They didn't get flying. I thought for sure they'd get flying with some counters there to try to close this thing out quicker. Three, four, five, six, seven. They could have got seven damage through. I may just end up conceding here. I don't know. I'd like to see what my next card off the top would be. I don't think it's going to be nearly helpful enough to, you know, help us get back into this game. But uh, I'd like to at least see what it is before I decide to concede here. Yeah, that definitely doesn't do it. Let's see if we can get something here off of this. Innkeeper. Well, better off doing this, I think, right? All right, that's unfortunate. I mean, gosh, that's a that's a tough one to swallow, you know, but it is what it is. We had a stellar run, and I mean a stellar run with Mono Green. Again, back to back, by the way, so that's awesome. That's going to do it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. We'll be back again here tomorrow with another video as well as a live stream tonight on the channel, so be sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss that. But we're going to probably be trying to grind, uh, grind our way into Mythic uh, as early as possible. So be there and come hang out with us. It'll be a lot of fun. But I hope you enjoyed the mono green list, man. Again, this is the second time I played this one through. Um, you know, I thought for sure playing it two times, the the win rates are going to drop on it and whatever. But it actually held strong, man. We were having some really good runs with this thing. And uh, it's not green is not as bad as you would think right now, man. It, uh, it definitely has some angles you can take to it that... Uh, you know, make it at least competitive in the standard ladder. And uh, as you can see, we went through diamond with it feeling pretty good. So uh, there's obviously some bad matchups. You don't want to see a ton of spot removal as well as sweepers. Those types of decks that are heavy in removal are pretty tough. Uh, and I also didn't see any mono red today. I did see mono red previously and uh, it did beat us in the game that we saw it, but they went first and they killed us by turn three. So not a lot you can do there, uh, but it, it's a pretty good deck, man. And I don't think it. Uh, I don't think we should throw it away just yet. Mono green is feeling pretty darn good. So hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you for making it to the very end. And huge shout out to the uh, Mardu Mob. If you guys don't know, the Mardu Mob is the membership program on the channel. So they help support me monetarily. And I want to just say thank you to them at the end of every video. Because I do greatly appreciate everything you guys do for me. Thank you for the support, guys. And we'll see you hopefully tonight. Peace out. The name is says you know Patrick. Yeah, yeah. If you play him, then it's tragic. Hit him with the mythic, yeah, that's magic. Yeah, MTG, that's what you'll see if you like and subscribe. With the upload, man. Uh, man, all of the time. Coming with the best decks to the meta. This ain't cheap.